What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Whew, I just finished this cash session. I wanted to make this intro now because it's fucking bananas. Sorry for my language, whatever. That's all I have to say. Uh, I came here because I also heard that the cash games here were pretty sick and games get pretty big and it did not disappoint tonight. Played a pretty long marathon session, got plenty of hands, plenty of action, massive pots, and that, that's it, that's it. Just just watch, literally that's all you have to do. Click that like button as well because this is a really cool video and a lot of ups and downs, it's everything you ask for. So let's just, I'm gonna stop talking, let's just go to the hands right now, roll the tape. Let's hop into this 1025 game at Cherokee where it's a $5,000 max for only one hour after that, it becomes match the stack and chaos happens. Anyways, one of the first hands, we pick up ace 10 off suit in the big blind. There's a hijack raised to $100 and action folds to me. Sure, I'm in here. Let's make the call and see a flop of King Jack Jack. Got a gut shot straight draw and an overcard. I check it over to him and he bets out $100. Got a lot of equity and happy to see a turn. I make the call and it comes a glorious ace. Stumbling into top pair with a king kicker, not a bad holding. I check and he checks this one back. We're going to a river now, which comes a five here. Decision point to either bet or check here. And look, I think I'm happy to get to showdown. I don't even know what worse hands can make the call besides like a crying call from a king. So with that said, I decided on a check. Let him bluff at it if he wants to. And he does. He bets out $325, so didn't check the river to fold. I make the call, and he shows us ace-king. That is a pretty good hand. A very unfortunate way to start this session down a couple hundred dollars. But I guess I'm glad I didn't lose more if he were to bet the turn. Next hand, we're down a couple hundred dollars already. Let's try to make this back up. I have king-queen offsuit in the small blind with a $50 straddle on board. There's a plus one player who opens it up to $150. Cutoff makes the call and here out of position. Mixed feelings about putting another raise over this or just calling the 150. I decided on opting on the more passive route, which is a call. The straddle calls as well. So we're going multi-way to a flop of king nine four to hearts. Action is going to check all the way around here. So I'm feeling pretty good about my top pair. The turn is the seven of hearts now, which gives me a queen high flush draw to go along with my top pair. Out of position against the entire field, I decided on a check. Next to act, the straddler decides to bet out $275 now. And when action folds to me, I think I just have a pretty standard decision on a call. Don't need to overplay my pretty good hand on this board so far. We're out of position, don't need to bloat the size of the pot up with a marginal holding. I see a river which comes the three of hearts. Stumbling into the second nuts and here another decision point to either bet or check and a lot of the times out of position I elect on checking. He will go for a bet of $450 and now look these decision points always get a little blurry like I have the second best possible hand here on this board and I don't think I can just make the call right with the second nuts. It seems like I should check raise, and then if you were to raise over my check raise, then I would have to fold, I think. That's the game plan going on in my head, hoping to get maybe a little more extra value from the jack of hearts or ten of hearts. I go for it and size up to 1400 but he snap folds, so looks like he didn't have a whole lot, and I might have made the maximum letting him blast off twice. After this hand, an hour has gone by in the session and it is now officially uncapped. I add on for $5,000 more. We're in the game for 10,000 total at this point. And I pick up pocket nines on the button with an under the under straddle. Action folds around to me and I raise it up to $50. Small blind folds, but the big blind has other intentions. He's been a little aggressive so far and puts in a raise to 500. Straddle gets out of the way and onto me. I have a pretty good hand to see a flop with, especially being in position, so I make the call. Going to a flop of Queen Jack Jack to spades. Not an amazing flop, but it is a paired board, so pairs are hard to make here. He decides to continue betting out $625. 
Kind of a weird sizing as it's pretty big, close to half pot, a little bit more than that. And pocket nines, I don't think I can get away with it just yet. He can barrel with a lot of hands that I beat, mainly ace king, ace 10, even maybe even king 10 if he's ambitious enough to do so. All those hands have a lot of equity against mine, but I'm here to make the call for sure. Not getting out of the way yet. And we see a safe eight of clubs on the turn. Brings in two clubs on the board and now he checks... Seems like my suspicions are coming true as he has some over cards, potentially a lot of air. I check this one back with nines as I don't think I can get called by worse. Anyways, the river now is pretty awful. The ace of spades, not loving it. And you know, even worse, he fires out 1500 into the middle. Gotta let my cards go now, I think, and just give this one up as much as I like fighting for every single pot. This one seems like a clear give up. One of the worst cards I wanted to see. All of his bluffs get there, and I don't even know what I beat if I call. So I'm out. I fold. Let him have it. Nice hand. What's cool is that the very next deal, the dealer gives me another opportunity to make some money. I pick up Ace Queen Offsuit in the cutoff. Straddle is on, so I raise it up to $150. The button and under the gun player call. Going multi way in middle position here the flop comes pretty darn good ace four six two spades the unknown player straddler checks it over to me and i have a decision between betting and checking with my specific hand obviously very strong hand on this board and for some reason i decided to mix in a check i think it's right to do so a small percentage of the time here especially multi-way and that allows the button player to bet out 300. The straddler surprisingly calls, and now I'm sitting with top pair. Pretty good kicker. I don't think a check raise is in order here. So no need to blow it up the size of the pot. I'm not actually sure what either of these players could have. Maybe some spades or a flush draw or a worse ace, but I'm happy to see what develops. I make the call as well. So still three ways. The turn is the king of clubs. Straddle checks. I'm just going to check in flow now and the button decides to check back. Now hoping to just fade a spade and expect to win a lot of the time. The river is a three. Straddle checks for a third time. Doesn't seem like he's going to have too much and I definitely need to go for value now. Trying to decide on how much to bet. I opted for a price of $950. Sizing just under 1,000, hoping this number will entice a call from a bad ace, maybe even a king. And the button does make the call, under the gun player folds, and I show my hand expecting to win, and he actually shows us ace jack. Just out kicked him, definitely results wise, could have won a lot more than what I did win in this hand. But I'm happy with how I played that regardless, it's going to be hard for him to have such a strong hand like that, and it's just a cooler. I'm happy the cooler went my way though. From ace queen progressing into a better hand, ace king of clubs on the button with the $50 straddle now agreed that it'll be on the whole night. There's a hijack open to $150 and <laughs> let's raise this one. We're playing plenty deep against this opponent so I three bet to 600. Action folds around to this player and he thinks that 600 is just some silly small raise. He puts in a re-raise and bumps it up to 1650 Like I said, we are playing extremely deep behind. A little bit more than 15000 effective here, so haha, <laughs> let's battle. I make the call and we're going heads up to the flop in a 4-bet pot. Big pot brewing and it comes queen 9 4 2 clubs. Got the nut flush draw, two over cards, and I'm loving life, certainly committing my hand in the middle here. And he bets out 1300 And for this price, not much to do besides a call. He definitely has pocket queens in range, which is pretty gross. Hoping to hit a club here when I make the call. The turn is the 9 of diamonds. Now, even worse, he bets out 2350 and now that the board is paired, like I said, one of the most probable holdings you could have was pocket queens that now ace king is drawing totally dead against. A club wouldn't help us against the flush, but he certainly has more hands outside of just pocket queens. He can certainly have ace king himself that we would be chopping with. He certainly has pocket aces, has pocket kings, ace five suited, pocket jacks, um, a variety of different holdings that I've seen him play since he's relatively aggressive. 
But for this price of $2,300, we are facing this bet here. I'm not going away. I'm in here. Can't fold such a strong hand with a strong draw. Let's make the call because sometimes hitting an ace or king could be good as well. We're off to a river, which is the five of spades. Wrong black card that I wanted to see. And he makes my decision pretty easy when he announces all in. It's about 13,000 when I count it out. So that's a pretty big jam. Maybe he truly does have pocket queens because that's the nuts and wants to go for max value. But hey, I've just got to let my cards go now. I fold and add on. It's time to battle. Battling in the next hand we go. I have pocket sevens in the big blind with the straddle on. Like I said, it's going to be on the whole night. Action folds around to the small blind player who raises to 200. Here, I am happy to make the call. Going heads up to a flop, which comes king three deuce. He starts with a check to me here, and I have mixed feelings about a check or bet. With such a mediocre holding on this board right now and in position, I decided against betting here and just check back. The turn is a board pairing deuce, which really shouldn't change a whole lot, so overall, good card for my hand. He decides to bet $225 now, though, so weird development, but I'm never folding pocket sevens here. I make the call. Now, going to a river which comes a double paired board, it's another king. So now, pocket sevens is a pretty good two pair holding and almost a premium on this board. It's hard for him to have a big hand and I beat a whole lot, especially ace high. And when he fires out $600, I have an amazing bluff catcher. Not sure how strong his hand is once he checked the flop here. So I call and he has ace deuce of hearts. Not loving life right now, losing two big pots back to back, getting sucked out on here doesn't ever feel good. It feels even worse after losing a massive hand with ace king, but we didn't come here to quit. Let's just keep on grinding back and I get rewarded the next hand with pocket queens in the hijack. Even better, there's action as the player to my right raises to $125. Definitely putting in a three bet with my premium holding and people might actually think I'm steaming because... I'm obviously not happy with how the last two hands have gone. I raised to $500 and he decides on just making the call. So once again, I'm in position, going heads up to a flop of 10, 6, 3, rainbow. He checks it over to me, which is pretty standard. And now with this really dry flop, I have an overpair that probably should be betting like a high percentage of the time. The issue is that sometimes I want to mix in checks. And this time I just didn't have a great feeling about my hand for some reason. Th maybe things are just going really bad recently. So want to do some pot control and maybe disguise the strength of my hand. I decided on checking this one back. The turn, well, punishment. It's the ace of diamonds, a disastrous card because this is just one of the two cards I didn't want to see any ace or any king. He starts with a check and... Now I'm regretting my decision of checking the flop. Whatever, I have to check this turn now after such a bad one. Not a whole lot of action going on here, and the river is a five. Doesn't really change the board a whole lot, and this player now bets out $500. I'm frustrated, I'm annoyed, he can easily have an ace, but I can't talk myself into a fold. I just make the call and flick it in there, and he shows us pocket kings. No way. Holy shit, we just lost the complete minimum checking the flop and turn. Could have actually lost my entire stack and doubled this player up, but it feels nice to just lose the complete minimum with such a strong holding, but it also just sucks to just keep getting crushed. But like I said, the drum beats on. We've got to keep on grinding. And this is when my chips come. After losing the ace king hand, I buy in for a bunch more. I'm in for piles of cash and let's go. Battling deep stacked, we've got to win some money today. The following hand I recorded a little late. I have queen four of spades under the gun on the straddle. There's a cutoff raise to 100. Small blind calls, I call. So three ways to a flop, which gives me a flush draw in nine, seven, three. Action checks all the way around on this flop. So we get to see a free turn, which is the bink five of spades. Awesome. Finally have a value hand and a good one at that. And when the small blind checks over to me, I bet near the size of the pot to 300, hoping to just get some value. And the cutoff player decides on a call. So now building a pot here, hoping to get more value. The river is the jack of hearts. With a little bit more than $900 in the middle here, I just want to get max value. 
People must think I'm tilted at this point, which granted it might be true, but I have such a strong hand and I've got to make up some money that I've been losing the past few ones. So I fire out $1,500 in the middle an overbet and a pretty big one at that. And this player thinks for a little bit and ends up calling. We got action. I show the queen high flush and that is going to be way good. I finally win a really big pot or at least a chunky one at that. It feels nice to end this losing streak of hands back into the swing of things. Hand following that, we've been patient, trying to play well, and I get rewarded with pocket kings. And even better, there is a $50 straddle and $100 blind raise. So we're playing essentially $5,100 this hand. Beautiful timing to pick up kings, and I raise it up to $300. We get the big blind player who's brand new to the table, sitting with about $4,000 in a stack. He makes the call, and the $100 blind raiser calls as well. So... Just the three of us in position and the flop comes 10, six deuce rainbow. Super dry flop and basically the same thing that happened earlier when I had queens. Action checks to me and I'm just gonna play this a little bit more trickily. Certainly can check back a strong range or just a pile of nothing. Here with the strong range, I check back. The turn is now a three and the big blind decides to bet $500, which is music to our ears. That money's probably gonna go my way, but we have another development in the hand. The plus one player, other player in this hand, raises to 1,500. What? I don't know what's going on here, man, and this is really strange. This board texture is really dry, and I'm sitting with just one pair, and I think three betting this and putting in yet another raise would be pretty ambitious and quite the overplay. So it seems like the only thing that I can do here is to just continue with a call, hope that no one has me beat and let them keep bluffing. Not sure, but I'm gonna make the call for 1500 and the big one player folds. So now we're going heads up and really interesting dynamics going on. The river is a four. Now any five makes a straight, which I certainly don't like, but now things feel a lot better when this opponent checks. And I'm thinking now it's certainly time to bet for value. I have massively under my hand given it's not that strong now that there's a four liner on the board, but I'm gonna try to get 10X to call and not believe me. I'm certainly known to pile in money with nothing, so why not pile in money with kings? I polarized to $4,200, and this player doesn't take too long before just folding. Seemed like he didn't have much, so I guess my check on the flop actually ended up netting me another profit of $2,000. All things considered, this was a fun hand. The following hand, things are going well and strapping your seatbelts, just pay attention. I have ace four of hearts in the big blind and there's a cutoff raise to $150. The button next to act three bets to 525. Small blind folds and I peel my cards here. It's a fun hand to play. I'm out of position against the two latest positions that can be raising wide. On top of that, the button player is the one that I battled with when I had ace king. So. Definitely seems like a really good spot to four bet light here, given the late position raise, late position three bet. I'm gonna go for it, and we're playing plenty deep against these players. I size up to a four bet to $1,575, about three X the three bet out of position. Anyways, luckily the cutoff player folds, so he doesn't have a whole lot, and the button, definitely not one to back down from pressure. He ends up making the call, Let's play a monster pot with what I would consider not the best hand that I would ever four bet with. Anyways, the flop gives me some life. It's jack five, five, two hearts. Got the nut flush draw with a big pot coming again. Let's hit our flush draw this time, please dealer. I start off with a small bet of just $1,000. A little sprinkle as to what could happen here. And for 1,000, he makes the call. Come on, dealer, you know what to do. The turn, deuce of hearts, let's go. Finally, we've been grinding all night long and I have the nut flush in a massive four bet pot. Once again, here, definitely time to bet, obviously, because I have basically the nuts. I sized to 1800, a little bit small once again, as usually when four bet pots, I'm just gonna have one pair at best. And for $1,800, He's not going anywhere once again. He makes the call, so it seems like he's got a pretty strong hand. And when the river comes an inconsequential four of diamonds, there is roughly $9,900 in the middle. 
and it seems like this guy has a pretty strong hand. I'm not sure if this guy's going to fold a jack or an overpair in this situation if I bet big. So let's put that to the test. For pure value, I fire out $8,500, almost a pot size bet here. And he doesn't take too long before flicking in a call. I show my hand and that's it. Scoop all the chips my way. He ends up somehow showing a five. So a massive cooler here. Maybe he had ace five suited. Not sure what he could have, but pretty sick that this hand happened and I win a $27,000 pot my way. Just wow. All that patience and some run bad earlier on the session. Things finally went my way here, hitting a flush draw and coolering trip fives in a four bet pot. With all the momentum going my way here, we are playing shorthanded near the end of the night and I pick up jack nine of diamonds in the small blind. There's a cutoff raise to 1500, button makes the call and like I said, we're playing shorthanded here. So that favors more aggression and aggression is the path that I'm choosing. I raise to $850, get the cutoff player to think about it for a long time, but he ends up folding and the button makes the call. So against another strong opponent here, I've got a marginal hand out of position and the dealer gives me jack nine, six, all clubs. Let's go, baby. I love this. Pretty damn good flop for my hand to say the very least. I start off with a bet of $550. And for 550, he makes the call with not much to play for behind, about 2500. So trying to play for stacks here. The turn is the ace of spades. All right. If this player was just calling with the naked ace high flush draw, then I think we're gonna get it all in. I'm unsure of the sizing, but with about a pot size bet behind, I'm out of position. I'm gonna go for all of it. That was always the plan, right? So I rip it all in, and this player tanks. He thinks about it for a while and says he has a strong jack, but ends up letting it go. Unfortunate there, I guess it was a pretty bad turn card to see. Wanted him to pin a stack, but the turn said no. Anyways, it's nice to end off the session on a heater after what was a pretty brutal start. Holy shit, guys. I don't know what to say. It's currently uh, 5, 11 a.m. So monsterly long day of poker, monster session, and I have good news. Let's go over the numbers. I mean, the hands that we played were sick. Just found a way to run pretty well at nearing the end of the night, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, ace four hands into trips. Amazing. I was in the game for a pile, piles of money. Um, the number is 44450. That's how much I was in for. Out of the game, 459185. For six hours of play, not too shabby. If you made it this far at the very end, thanks so much for watching. I mean, there's a lot to talk about here, and uh, this video, is, I'm sure, is pretty long, but I'm sitting here in the sports book. It's pretty sick, I'll be honest. There's a lot of screens going on. It's a pretty cool sports book, and uh, the poker room's right there as well. It's an amazing day, amazing night, a lot of fun. I love this. By far my favorite stop ever in poker so far. This venue is amazing, so I'll be back uh, next circuit. But um, yeah, cash games do not disappoint. Thanks so much for watching. Here's to uh, more bangers to come. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna get some sleep now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get some sleep. See you guys next time. Peace.